Ford never made four valve, 10 cylinder camshafts. If you followed the build since the very beginning, you know the roller coaster of a story it has been to get camshafts. And as you can see, they're not on this table. We knew we'd have to source custom ones. What we didn't know is how difficult it was going to be. What we ended up doing was custom catting the core. The Five months into the build, we got in touch with someone who assured us his shop was capable of making the camshaft. It got to the point where he told us the cans were out to be heat treated. And Little did we know, it was all a lie. Unfortunately, we got screwed. There's no shipping labels, no invoice with the heat treatment, no trace of anything being produced. We wasted five months with this guy. And we've reached out to multiple shops. This was a massive delay. And at this point, we didn't know if we could get a shop to make the course in a reasonable amount of time without costing us an arm and a this leg. This is a spool. So they, we got a billet spool out of 8620 cam. This is a sample. Fortunately, cam. we found the shop overseas and they only took them a few weeks to machine and deliver one of the samples. We were so excited to after almost an entire year have actual parts on our hands. Finally got the course. A month later, the rest of the camps arrived and were shipped off to bullet racing camps for heat treat and grind. We spoke to Bullet yesterday and the camps are now at Heat Treat. So they have two more steps before they're back. Guys, the wait has been so long, but boy oh boy, was it worth it. Because we finally got our can. <laughs> We haven't opened these yet. We waited two days to open it for you guys. So they should be all shiny or nice. and low B. I'm not sure who is that a word? Low B? Low B. Okay. Oh, paper. That's good. Oh, oh, oh. All right. All right. Then we're... Okay. Oh, of course. Oh, we got this. We're going to have a lot of stickers. stickers. Mm. Oh, they're not as coppery as I expected. Yes. So you can see this is uh, this has been copper plated. All the other spots have been Every ground. Yes, yeah, ground. This these surfaces, all of these surfaces were ground. Let's open all of them. Here they are, in all their glory. Four cams, four valve V10, custom cut, grind. They actually look really good. The bullet mm -hmm. definitely did a good job. There's some spots where the copper plating is flaking, but we don't really think that's gonna be a big deal. These are all surfaces that are not bearing surfaces or anything like that, so. The lobes look massive. Yeah, bring that other one. This is from a V10, the, the two valve V10, so it has more lift than a four valve. So you can see how much more duration oh there God. is. That's ridiculous. The lift is about the same as a two valve, it seems like. So that's that's, that's a lot. That's a lot of duration. That's a lot. Dude. That's that's gonna be a lot of ripples. So these are the ones that we catted up ourselves. Uh, we couldn't get anyone yeah, like to... like the lobes are wider, right? We yeah. did some liberties. Right, we, we did some design changes from the stock one. And one thing we have to check now, that we have them, and we couldn't check before because it was not finished ground, and that's the timing gears. So this has to fit on there, otherwise these don't work. <laughs> so let's see how this interface... 
I mean, it's bullet racing. They know what they're doing. Yeah, but so. do we know what we're doing? Yeah, but I think if it was wrong, they would go like, these guys are idiots. Yeah, I don't know. So we're not going to machine it when we know what it's supposed to be. Oh, oh yeah. All right. So then is, now. Is there a lot of like, oh, there is quite a bit of play that we yeah, can. Yeah, for the uh, for timing. Timing, right? yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's another thing. We had to choose all these timing points because we didn't have anything to reference. I mean, we had things to reference, but nothing is the four valve V10, right? Yeah. So there's no such thing as the four valve yeah. V10. So we had to sort of reverse engineer the firing order into the orientation of the lobes relative to the timing gear. Yeah, that, that probably took the longest. Yeah, in that, the camps, yeah that was so. the hardest part. So if everything goes right, we should be able to slide these lobes on put the cams in and it will time like a normal four valve. Yep. But, uh, you know, nothing ever goes the way yeah. planned. I mean, worst so. case scenario, we yeah. were talking about just chopping off that key yeah. and then we were just gonna have to do it the hard way, but hopefully everything works out. Yeah. And another trick people do with four valves to time is like they'll grind the key way down so they could wedge the, the wheel one way um, to give you a couple degrees. So we're, we have that in our pocket too, if it's not, you know, exactly <clears throat> right. Yeah. If we need a couple extra degrees or something. Yeah. So next thing is gonna be taking these and test fitting them on the heads. So let's take these over and get to that. Before we can mount the camshafts to the heads, we need to make some modifications. So if you guys remember about 12 videos ago, <laughs> a long time ago, we line board the heads after welding them together because they warped a little bit. We test fitted the the heads after line boring with the stock V10 cams just to make sure that we were doing it right. Uh, and it worked with that. But now that we have the actual cams, we're gonna clean all this up, lay the bearings on all the bores, and this time use the cams, bolt everything down, make sure nothing's binding. Line boring the heads made the cam journals oversized, which means we need to use cam bearings. Even though the bearings we bought were made for four valve heads, none of them fit properly. Some of the oil holes were misaligned or some were missing altogether. We ended up buying three kits to try pick the right bearings, but we still need to drill out a few oil holes. But before we could drill out those holes, well, we need to find the bearings. We're here in our uh, parts bench slash grinding table, slash storage. Uh, oh, I was looking for these. Oh, here we go. Here's one box. A little tiny little bearings. You should have three of these though. Look at the other two. Are you sure they're not all in here? I mean, it doesn't look like it. There are two in here. And here's all the cap, all the uh, cam caps. Where are the bearings? We really need to clean that table up. Thankfully, the bearings were stashed in my basement along with all the timing components, which we'll get to later in the video. Well, while Jack is fitting the checker spring, I went ahead and fitted all the bearings on the board so you can see they're all on there. I also put them in the caps. They have them all here. Everything fits pretty well. The only ones that we have to drill a hole for are these two on the intake side. So you can see this one doesn't have any holes and we have to feed oil from this hole. So that's on both heads and front and back. So we're gonna have to drill those out now before we fit the camshafts on them. To drill these holes, we start with the center drill to drill a small pilot in the right spot. Then we drill out the hole to size and finish it off with the chamfer. And there it is, just like OEM. All right, all done. We drilled out the bearings that we needed to, as you can see now, the holes line up. Yeah, there's some on the other head. So now, the moment of truth, finally. We're gonna take those camshafts and bolt them up, and we're gonna have to clearance all these caps because uh, we have all the lift. All so, the lift. Let's get some assembly lube and uh, drop the cams in for the very first time.
It's hard to put into words the feelings we have at this moment. The camshafts were the final pieces to the puzzle and they are finally sitting on the heads. And you have to admit, they look like 8000 RPMs. It's really too bad they won't be out in the open for much longer. With the cams now on the heads, we need to put the cam caps back on to check for any clearance issues. So here's what we found we need a clearance. Looks like most of these bottoms on the uh, lower rail. Seems like the top doesn't need anything, but we might go through and just uh, clean, clean it up, it a, up a little around there so we don't have anything uh, flaking off. Um, so we're gonna have to go through and pick at these, make sure we get them to clearance, have enough clearance while it's spinning. Um, so we're just gonna do that with a little drum sander on a dribble and make sure this won't hit. After marking all the areas we needed to grind, we got to work using a die grinder and some carbide bits. We tried to take out as little material as possible, so we took our time by making small cuts and checking every time. All right guys, now that we have our load clearances all in check, we're getting ready to clean all the camshafts, all the bearings, everything clean so that we can bolt it up to the engine and start degreeing the camshafts. That'll be the next step before we can get this thing started. With the cam caps torqued, we were relieved to be able to spin all four cams by hand with very little resistance, so it was time to move on to timing the engine. We have our Ford Performance Timing Kit, along with a few upgrades including ARP cam and crank bolts, Cobra Engineering secondary tensioners, and the modified cast iron tensioners that we covered in the previous video. Alright guys, so we were doing a quick and dirty check for uh, making sure the keyways were in the right position and it wasn't and we found out that we put the cams in the wrong position. So this one should be the exhaust, this one's the intake, so we uh, flipped them. So that's how it goes, so we're going to flip those Five out. 527? 527 is the intake. We'll make sure. I mean, that has to be right, yeah. otherwise our cams are... Left right. intake, 527. So, we're going to flip those, retorque everything God down. Damn. Now we got to take everything off, essentially. Everything we just did, so... After spending the next half hour swapping the camshafts to the right positions, we were finally ready to begin timing the engine. We made up this little bracket to span the valve cover bolts to allow us to mount the dial indicator. We'll be using the dial indicator to find top dead center with this. You could use a piston stop, but we're going to do that method. And we got our Moroso Pro wheel because we're a bunch of wannabe pros. But everything's set up now. We're going to go ahead and set the uh, Top dead center on the wheel, and then get to degree in our can. This was the first time either of us had degreed a four valve motor, so it took a bit of trial and error to figure out how to account for the slack on the cam sprockets. If we had the special hub, we would have been able to set TDC at zero degrees, but we're too cheap for that, so 30 and a quarter degrees became our TDC. 
From there, it was a matter of checking each camshaft to make sure the measured angles matched the camp card specs within a degree or so. For the exhaust, we were aiming for 118 degrees, and surprise, it wasn't. It should be at 118. Well, no. Well, minus, I mean, whatever, right? Yeah, we yeah, got yeah. 137.25 so 137.25 minus 30.25 all right we figured it out we're not well, that far off not yeah, by so, 10 degrees yeah we're, we're not we were saying we were 10 degrees advanced but we we just uh corrected it what happened was the wheel we thought it we just assumed or i guess that it was 360 all the way around but it, it's 180 and then it back goes backwards so we had to take that into account once we did that, we did the math. We're four degrees retarded, so we need to pull the cam advance, the exhaust advance, four degrees. So we're gonna see if we have slop in it because we didn't play with the slop yet. Pull the slop out, tighten the, the sprocket, and check it again, and if we're lucky, it'll be a one-hit wonder. Turns out we couldn't get everything we needed from the slack in the sprocket, so we had to grind the keyway enough to give us a few extra degrees of play. We got our uh, exhaust gear ground, so now this is lined up pretty well. Um, but before we torque this down, we want to take advantage of the slop in this gear. So we're gonna we loosen these both up and then drove the, the intake one direction. Um, so we retarded the intake as much as it, our slop will allow. We're gonna check the intake, make sure we're in the right, uh, that's the right direction. And maybe if we're lucky, both of these adding up will mean we don't have to grind it. But we're gonna go ahead and check that now before we cinch this down or torque this down the spec. So we're gonna switch over all our components over to measure the intake. To degree the intake cam, we moved our dial indicator to the intake valve and repeated the exact same steps as we did for the exhaust. In order to get our spec of 110 degrees, we ended up having to also grind the intake cam sprocket. All right guys, we're done with the left side of the engine. We degreed both cams. So exhaust, we went to 118.5. The spec is 118, so we're calling that good. And the intake, we went to 110.5. The spec is 110. So we're retarded by about half a degree on both intake and exhaust, which we're happy with. So now time to move on to the right side of the engine. We'll do it all over again. Do it all over again. We kind of got lucky on the last one, so let's hope we get lucky here. Yeah, we didn't really have to re-grind re it, so. Let's do this one. Actually, before we move to this side, we have something very important to check, our piston or valve clearance. Now that everything's degreed where we want it, we can finally check it. We got our checker spring, so what we're gonna do is just take a feeler gauge and check how much clearance we have between the tip at the um, top dead center and at like 10 degrees after and before, and make sure we're within, you know, a decent amount, like 0.1 of an inch on both the uh, intake and exhaust. Exhaust needs a little more, so maybe that one closer to 0.2, but uh, we'll make sure everything's good, and then we can move on to the other side. 75. 75 thousandths. Oh. So we're at top dead center right now, and we're at 75 thousandths of clearance between the intake valve and the piston. So we're gonna go degree by degree, you know, from zero to eight degrees after, before top dead center. And uh, hopefully, after what, what number? Center, right? Yeah, after, yeah. Right. What number are we? I mean, I think it's supposed to be 80 to 100, but. Oh, no. no. <laughs> all right, it's a new day. We got all our measurements. We talked with Todd um, from Todd Warren Cams. And yeah, we're looking at the push rod numbers, which is like 80 to 100, 
for intake and uh, I think it was like 180 or something for exhaust or 1 to 120 for exhaust, significantly more. But we were measuring 60 thou on our intake a couple degrees after top dead center and we have significant uh, exhaust clearance so that wasn't a worry but we were worried about the intake. Talking with Todd, they run down to like 30 thou so we have double the clearance. Yeah, we, we, we need a little more duration. So yeah, we told yeah. Todd, mix up some. <laughs> but we're good then, so. That's for the turbo cams. <laughs> we're, we're fine. We don't have to worry about cutting anything or getting more clearance Thank out. Thank God, dude. That would have been a pain in the yeah, ass. Yeah, that would have been bad. We would either, well, we could have started with retarding cams to try to get more clearance there, right? As you change the mm. low profile. Just move that, shift we, that over. Yeah, it would move this away so the piston's coming down. You could do that. You could, you know, put more valve reliefs. We already have valve reliefs in these uh, pistons. Um, we could put bigger ones in, um, grind them in. But Todd knows what he's doing. He made the piston, or he he spec the piston, spec the cam. So we've got adequate clearance. So we're we're done. We're good. We're gonna move on to the other side now. Degree this side. Recheck everything, and, and then we time get to, to start bolt everything up, putting it together. Many hours later. All right, we finished setting up the right-hand bank. We we got pretty much the same numbers as that, a little over 118, a little over 110 on the intake. So we know our bank one side is good, bank two should be good. We're gonna torque everything up, double check everything just cause. Yeah, we might check this side again. Yeah, but make sure everything's good. Um, but this should, I mean, we should be now ready to close the valve covers. Yeah, this will be, well, we got to put on the timing. We got to check the balancer. So the hub on the balancer has to get reamed to fit. So we want to verify that before we put it on. Um, so we got to measure that, make sure it fits good. But uh, yeah, we're going to tighten everything up for the timing system. And this should be ready. The last step before we can bolt up the timing cover is to clearance the ATI balancer hub to the snout of the crankshaft. Out of the box, the hub is slightly undersized and the spec calls out 9 to 12 ten thousandths of interference. So we took the hub to the lathe and used sandpaper to slowly hone the ID of the hub until we hit the required diameter. Alright, that should be all said. We're about 0.8 to 0.9 thousandths of interference, so we're right on the money. Uh, it's time to take this back to Jack's garage and final assemble the engine. Here we go. With the timing cover and all pulleys bolted back on, this thing is finally looking like a complete engine again. But of course, one step forwards, two step backwards. 1.2735. So we're checking the depth of the crank snout here. And you're supposed to also check on your balancer hub to make sure that when you actually press it in, you have it seated, seated all the way. One point one four four. So another problem. Uh, we were hoping to get the engine started this weekend, but I don't know if we're going to now. But we'll see. Anyway, it's a good thing we checked that. Unfortunately, we checked it last. But this, so this depth here, this thickness, is smaller than the the distance between the um, timing gear and the snout in. So what that would mean. So this depth, right? Yeah. So from there to there. That's bigger than this, so if we were to press this on, it would go all the way down. And when we put the, the washer and the, the bolt, this won't actually be clamping down on the, the gear, and it would have slop. And right, this will stick out on there, Correct. which is There'll not be a what gap. you want. You want actually this thickness to be longer than this, so that you're clamping down on the hub. Correct. So we, we've been looking at pictures, and it looks like... Yeah, this one. The, yeah, it looks like the 6.8s have a longer from, we're using kind of this as a reference, but you, if you look at the whole snout, this is longer than either a 4.6, a 5.4 GT500 crank we were looking at. So what that means is, um, you know, this doesn't have sufficient length for us. And this is a 4.6 balancer that we bought. Yeah. We thought it was the same. We didn't really think that would be an issue, but 
I mean, there's no six eight from ATI yeah. specific balancer. I think Innovation West might have they it. might have had one, yeah. But, but so what that means is we are, we we have to put a spacer somewhere. So we could either put a spacer here to get this longer, so the washer will press down on this. But what we're thinking is a better idea is we're going to cut this snout with an angle grinder, like have to seal up the front of the engine really well and just uh, take off, I mean, like a quarter inch or something, right? We're, we measured it. We're off by a hundred thousandths, I think. Yeah. So uh, more than that. Um, and the threads on here don't start until they're deeper in size, so it won't. It won't cause any problem with thread engagement um, doing that. You can that. see in there, the threads are yeah. way in there. All right, guys, so we think we find a solution. We, we're not going to cut in the snout. We don't want to mess with getting anything dirty in there. We found, we think, something better. Yeah, so. we're going to just make a spacer out of, we have one of the old washers from uh, the cam gears. So we're going to take the, the washer. It's obviously too small. We're going to have to open this up to slightly larger than the diameter of the hole um, and that will allow it to slip over then we'll put in the nut or the bolt like stock and it should work fine so we're going to take this to the lathe and open up the hole um, to clear that, that yeah diameter. we just have to clear this now yeah that way everything fits right and we already checked we still have enough thread engagement 1d yeah, over 1d so 1.06 After a quick trip to the lathe, we had ourselves a spacer to mount the balancer on the engine. All that was left was to run to the auto parts store to borrow a balancer installer and the ATI harmonic balancer was fully seated for hopefully the first and last time. Then the alternator goes on and to finish off the front of the engine, the belt is installed and the crank bolt is torqued to spec. With the front of the engine all buttoned up, it was time to move on to the valve train. We bought a special tool to install the rockers, but it required modifications to work properly. It took a while to get used to, but once we got the hang of it, we knocked out both heads and were ready to bolt up the valve covers and say goodbye to our camshafts, hopefully for a very long time. All right, so we're gonna be pressurizing the oil system. We're gonna use this uh, cleaning tool we used before, um, and then pump in our oil into the oil filter adapter and make sure oil is getting everywhere it's supposed to be. Um, make sure we don't have any kind of obvious leak where there shouldn't be. So this is just gonna be, you know, pre-starting pre it, make sure everything is good. So we'll set the Set it to like 40 PSI on the compressor and pump in oil through the oil filter. There. We should see oil from all these areas. The heads should be getting oil. Yeah, all the way the back. The yeah. Front, right. So hopefully no leaks anywhere. Pressure button. Ready? Go. And it is going in the pan. Maybe we do have the wrong side. Oh no, there it goes. Oh, I hear it. I hear it. Oh yeah, you can see it's oil's coming through. But how about from the back side? Everything look okay? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely coming. You can see it's actually leaking from the the bores now. Okay. What about the weld? Is it leaking there? No, that's the part that's like pulled with oil. How about the other side here? You don't see any leaks? I mean, like I said, now the oil is coming from all the bores. So you can see it's dripping onto the rockers, the lifters. You can see there's pouring oil there. Oil is coming from the tensioner. So we're definitely getting yeah in the back too, right there. Give her a spin. It's all coming. Here. Now that we know we are getting oil in all the right places, it's finally time to close this thing up and move on to the finishing touches to get this thing fired up. Okay. 
To get the intake to seal, we had to cut up two sets of V8 gaskets. While Diego worked on drilling and tapping the intake to install fittings for vacuum lines, I worked on fabricating a hacked up exhaust system just to get the engine started. We bolted up an O2 sensor and also added some mufflers so we could hopefully hear any issues or weird noises from the engine while it's running. With the intake mounted up, we could finally connect the fuel lines and take our injectors for a spin. We got our last check to do now. It's the fuel system. So we put everything together. We want to check for leaks. Uh, we just got a fuel pump in a bucket here. So the fuel pump will feed fuel to our regulator. We got to return back to the, to the tank and then our two lines coming in. So this is the first time we'll be putting power to this and checking uh, for leaks. And then we want to take it a step further um, and we're going to actually pulse the injectors we could pulse it with the fuel tech, but we're just going to manually pulse the injectors to get all the air out of the line so they'll start up as fast as possible and build that oil pressure as quick as possible. So we're going to go ahead and trigger each injector and make sure we get a nice spurt of fuel coming out. So let's go ahead and do it. Um. With the fuel system checked, we can finally move on to the wiring harness and the cooling system. And just like that, the engine is fully assembled and ready to start. So we finally got the engine fully assembled. We couldn't have gotten here without getting the unobtainium parts that we got at the beginning, the camshafts. So we got to give a shout out to Bullet Racing Cams for sit, grinding those and Todd Warren for specking them out for this build. Everything's ready. All we got is a couple things left like filling it up with oil and coolant. Um, we got to go over the tune, make sure it all looks good, connect the battery and this thing is going to be ready to fire. In this video, like you saw, we finished setting up the engine stand. So we hooked up our cooling system here. We have it strapped to these uh, brackets we welded. We hooked up the map lines. We hadn't done that in the past, so you saw me tapping into the intake. The harness is done. So we have all the wires here that we still have to connect to the battery, etc. but everything's ready to go. We hooked up all the gaskets, so we can actually move on to the to-do list here and pretty much cross off everything that we have left. So like I said, we modified all our gaskets, valve covers, the intake, everything is done. Uh, we drilled our cam bearing bolts. We showed that earlier as well. We obviously finished assembling the heads. We degreed the cam, so that was huge on this video. Uh, we, well, we zinc plated the bolts, so you saw that's tightening all that up. And we checked our valve, cl valve clearance, and that's all good as well. So as you can see, the list is complete. So like Jack said, the last thing that's left is start engine. And we know it's been a while since we last dropped a video, so we're not gonna make you guys wait that long for the next video. We wanna get this thing started this week. So stay tuned, don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.